Hello, everybody, and welcome to the About to Interview podcast. I'm your host, as always, that guy named John. This show focuses on the interviews I have with actors, directors, authors, and other creators, and is a subsidiary of the About to Review podcast, which covers weekly TV shows, movies, comics, as well as national and international film festivals and conventions. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at About to Review. And make sure to subscribe, like, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Blueberry, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, and of course, youtube.com slash about to review. You can visit abouttoreview.threadless.com to buy some swag and merchandise, and head on over to abouttoreview.com to support the show by clicking the support tab, as well as seeing full show notes with all of the links to the guests in the show notes. So now, on to the show. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Peter Tensio is the director of the new show on Amazon, Jean-Claude Van Johnson, and formerly the director of the amazing show Key and Peel, and also Keanu from last year. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, so you directed, in my opinion, one of my favorite comedies from last year, Keanu, which was amazing and had some great action elements in it and it is no surprise that you'd love action films which is why i thought you were a perfect fit for jean-claude van johnson oh well thank you that's that's awesome to hear um yeah this was this project immediately jumped out at me as soon as i read the script the, the original pilot script that i read was really funny and and clearly dave was also has a, a great love of action movies and it just yeah it seems like a perfect fit for me as well excellent so being that you are a huge action movie fan and have been for a while my first question is when did jean-claude van damme first deliver a spinning back heel kick into your heart (laughs) uh the first jean-claude movie that i was exposed to and eventually became obsessed with was like a lot of people, I'm sure it was blood sport. That was kind of my, <laughs> my first introduction to him. And then, you know, really the the next movie that really did it for me and that I end, ended up becoming my favorite Jean-Claude movie is uh, time cop. Time cop was really the first one. I think the first one that I saw in theaters and I remember just being completely blown away by the premise and the, the, just the level of insanity on display while also everyone takes it completely seriously. And it's got this very emotional through line with his, his dead wife. And it's, it's just like the ultimate Jean-Claude movie. So that's, that's definitely the the one closest to my heart. Awesome. Now in the, in these first episodes, this first kind of six episode arc of Jean-Claude Van Johnson, Time Cop definitely factors in pretty huge. Was that part of the original script or were those things that you were able to add to it once you saw the material? Because, yeah, in the pilot, those were there. That was in Dave's original script um, that the the Time Cop references and, you know, that dialogue about Looper being better than Time Cop and vice versa. Right. All, all of that hilarious stuff was in it. And then we we kind of, over the course of the series, there's even more of a nod to Time Cop that mm-hmm. I won't give away for people who haven't seen it yet. But um, that was definitely uh, a, a communal love of Time Cop between the writers and myself. Um, we were all very much on board with, with getting into some Time Cop territory. <laughs> Fantastic. One of the things that is also incredible, you know, are the, the action scenes in this, which you even make mention or rather a character in the film makes mention of, Oh, no one does it like they did in the eighties movies. This is kind of the new way of doing it. So when you approached the action scenes, 
Was that something you had in mind as far as you wanted it to be more of that classic, you know, Bloodsport, Lionheart, Time Cop style, or more of that kind of John Wick, you know, Atomic Blonde style? Um, that, that's a good question. We kind of strived to have a little bit of both. We sort of wanted to have our cake and eat it too. Um, we definitely wanted, I mean, Dave and I have probably dreamed our whole lives of being able to just do a classic Jean-Claude Van Damme action fight scene. Mm -hmm. And we definitely did that in the show and, you know, tried to, I think for me, it was a matter of trying to sort of cherry pick between what makes those classic scenes really special and, and work really well and really fun to watch, but also what has, what's been going on in the action world and what are sort of the, the newer techniques or, or new things we can do to really make sure that they're exciting and fun to watch and don't feel like they're cheesy or, or dated in any way. Mm -hmm. So we sort of tried to combine that aesthetic. Um, there's also sort of this, this idea of an arc through the show where JC is getting sort of dragged into the modern world, kicking and screaming a little bit. And right. um, we wanted the action scenes in the show to sort of reflect that arc. So the earlier stuff is a little bit more in that classic Jean-Claude movie world. And then as the series goes on, they sort of get a little bit more and more of a modern tinge, but I'm, I'm definitely an action purist in a lot of ways in terms of how I approach the, the staging and the and the photography mm -hmm. for a good action scene. So it, it hopefully sort of runs a gamut, but in an interesting and unique way. For sure. When you mention, uh, you know, him kind of getting dragged back in the world, kicking and screaming, one of my favorite lines uh, in the series was, you know, someone hands him a weapon or says, you know, don't you need a weapon? And he points to his legs and says, I already have a weapon which ties into a lot of just kind of mythos of Jean-Claude Van Damme. So if you can disclose it, how much is the insurance policy on his legs? <laughs> That's a great question. I actually don't know the answer to that, <laughs> but there is absolutely a heavy insurance policy. I mean, that man, he, luckily he's a specimen. I mean, he's right. 57 years old and he could, he could kick my ass all day, every day, but, <laughs> right. uh, you know, it's definitely something you think about as soon as you're asking him to do stunts. And he's really game to get in there and get his hands dirty. And he wants to be very hands on and he wants to do stunts. And as soon as he's doing them, you start in the back of your mind go, oh, my God, I don't want to be the director who, <laughs> who ruined Jean-Claude Van Damme's career by asking him to do something crazy. So it's, it's certainly in your mind when you're working with him. Awesome. And then last question, also tying into something that happens in the show. So Instead of coconut water being piped through your home, if you could have your plumbing redone, what would it be? Uh, currently, I am obsessed with uh, yerba mate tea. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. I would probably, much to the chagrin of my wife and child, have yerba mate tea running through my house, which I don't know if it's good for your skin, but it would <laughs> sure be delicious. Uh, I'm sure you would absorb the caffeine uh, d just subcutaneously, so that might work. Yeah, I, I definitely would get a lot done. Right. You would be energized even while in the shower or anything, so that would definitely be helpful. <laughs> That'd be a nice way to wake up in the morning. Awesome. Well, that about kind of wraps it up. The show is Jean-Claude Van Johnson. I know you have a crazy press day uh, ahead of you, which is why I really appreciate you taking the time you know, to be on this podcast because I'm not centrally located in LA like everyone else <laughs> is. <laughs> well, no, thank you very much for having me. It was really fun. Yeah. And then where would people, where can people find the most up-to-date information on all of your projects? Because this is a six episode kind of first chunk of the season, but the other things that you are working on, where should people go to find those? Uh, the best place to get those kinds of updates is usually I'm, I'm fairly active on Twitter. So people can follow me, um, at Atencio on Twitter. Perfect. All right. Well, I have been here with Peter Atencio. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Joining me now is award-winning actress, singer, activist, and so much more. Miss Felicia Rashad, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure. 
uh, for me to have you on the show. And you are part of the new show, Jean-Claude Van Johnson, and you play Jane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you have always had an amazing ability to cross between different art mediums, be it the stage, the screen. What about Jean-Claude Van Johnson got its hooks in you? I read the script, mm -hmm. and around the time I was reading it, um, Jean-Claude uh, Van Damme films were being aired on late night television. Mm -hmm. And I discovered it quite by accident, just flipping channels. And I determined that I would watch them. I knew who he was because my son was an avid fan. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, th the action uh, films were not my preferred genre of film, so I didn't actively watch them. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything against them. I just didn't actively watch them. And um, when I was watching this film, I realized that he's a good actor. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I could do this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was as much as I knew. And I said, okay, I could do this. And I'm, I'm very glad that I did. Then David Zucker, uh, the producer, mm -hmm. um, David was in New York, and um, this was before the, the pilot was, was filmed. He reached out, and we he made time in his schedule to meet with me and have a meal, and we talked about the project, and we talked about our families as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so I realized I was going to be working with real human beings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Real people who care about real things, and that was uh, that was engaging to me. That was inviting, and uh, that's that's how. Okay, fantastic. And you are no stranger to playing strong, incredible women. So your character Jane in this new show, what makes her tick? How did you get into the mindset of this woman who is? You know, not just Jean Claude's agent, but also his his boss in this organization. Well, during the conversation with David Tucker, um, it became clearer to me that this is a woman who who has really made it in a man's world mm -hmm. uh, in this occupation, uh, both as an agent. Yes, and as a black uh, ops operative, mm -hmm. she she's giving direction. Right. She's putting people in place, and you know, I began to put all of this together. And in order for her to be in this position, mm -hmm. she has come through a lot. You oh, don't just sure. get to be in that position, uh, and especially no. <laughs> as a woman, and especially as a woman, you do not just get to be telling people where to go, what to do, assigning, giving people assignments, and you know, following up with them. You don't. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't happen. So I realize that this woman has a, a, a steel spine, as it were. Mm. Mm -hmm, she does. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a woman who can, and who can and does take a decision, and it doesn't take her all day to do it. <laughs> right. She makes the decision. That's it. Uh, yeah, she's a woman who gets men's attention. Mm -hmm. They listen to her. They respond to her. They respect her. That's hard earned. Absolutely, and that is something that. I mean, you have personal experience with, I mean, the things that you have been able to do in your career have just been incredible. Like I said, I mean, you have won so many awards, you've been nominated for so many things and you have earned so many people's respect. And so you can bring that, you know, to these characters, you know, when you recognize that similarity between, you know, the things that you have gone through to get where you are and the things that Jane has had to go through to get where where she is. 
you know, she can talk like one of the guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, her language is interesting. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I never, uh, in these years, and you know, it's not, it's not common for me to play a character who speaks in expletives so comfortably. Right. <laughs> and she does because she's one of the guys. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so with this, with this new format, you know, with this Amazon video style, where they do these kind of six episode, almost mini, uh, you know, arcs. Since you have been in yeah. TV for so long, what would you say the pros and cons are are for this new style, you know, of doing these shorter season arcs? This was still in a in an unusual way. Okay. It's as if it were one film. Hmm. Uh, you know, it, sometimes that's how it felt. Like we weren't just episode to episode to episode, and right. yet we were. It required and had tremendous organization. Mm hmm. This is one of the most one of the most organized projects I've ever worked on. Wow. Very well coordinated. Very well coordinated. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you think that yes. definitely factored into kind of the the ease of doing, you know, an episodic type show, but structuring it almost like the way you would do a film. Everything had a purpose and everything in its time and it was measured and it was, you know, thought out and, and worked well. One of the other things that, that I just have to say is growing up as a brown mixed kid, Seeing you on TV and mm -hmm. seeing you as Claire Huxtable and with a family of successful brown people on TV, of black people on TV, was a huge inspiration, you know, for me. And almost every episode, you dealt out some motherly advice that, yeah. <laughs> that has stuck with, you know, my generation to this day. And so I just, mm. I, you know, I wanted to really... Thank you for, for all of those lessons that, that you taught to me when I was younger. <laughs> Thank you. I do wonder, with that motherly advice that you used to dole out very frequently, if you were to give your character Jane some motherly <laughs> advice, what do you think that would be? <laughs> uh, be still. <laughs> Re reassess the circumstances rethink your thinking <laughs> what are you doing and why are you doing it yeah i think she's been at this job a long time mm -hmm. and i think uh, uh uh somehow she started to go another way hmm okay yeah she looked at stuff that she thought she couldn't change that she couldn't stop and she decided well if you can't stop it be a part of it and that's not necessarily uh, the best decision. You're the voice of, of a generation, of several generations. <laughs> and not just when it came to, you know, your speaking voice and your acting voice, but your singing. You have an absolutely gorgeous voice. And I was wondering if you have any future plans to do anything more with music. I um I do miss singing. Mm -hmm. I do miss working with musicians. I I do miss music in that way. I uh, there was a time when I was really doing quite a bit of that, and uh, I must say I have missed it. Um, it's a real discipline, though, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to sing, you have to sing. Yes. And I have not even been able to to continue my classes. All these years I've been in class mm -hmm. because it's something that you do. It's a discipline. Like a dancer goes to the bar every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I would take voice lessons every week. And I've not been able to do that because my work um, has kept me so very busy and away from New York, away from my teacher. 
So I would very much love to go back to that, and maybe there will be that opportunity for me soon. Okay. I mean, personally, I would love that. I, I would love to hear your voice again, you know, singing in, in exultation like you used to do. Uh, but yeah, so I, I hope that you get the chance. I mean, granted, having a busy schedule and staying very busy is also great, but having time for those truly creative pursuits, those creative outlets where you get to do what you want to do and sing, I, I hope you get the time to do that in the near future. Thank you, John. What would you say, you know, for the people listening, because I have a wide range of people who listen to to my show. So from someone who has been in the industry and as successful as you have been and earning all of the success you have had, what would you say are just a couple keys to moving forward and being successful in their chosen career? Oh, first, um, you have to believe in, in it. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in the work that you would do. And you must know that there is a place for you in that work. You okay. have to believe that first. And then you must stay true to the determination to realize yourself fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. In the art forms. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, it, it is a pleasure and an honor to speak with you. If you had told me when I was six, seven years old, watching you on TV that I would someday get the chance to speak with you on the phone about uh, just life and passions. I'm not sure if I would have believed you. So <laughs> it, it is amazing that you were able to make the time uh, to be on my show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, and then lastly, do you have anywhere that people can get the most up-to-date information of the projects that you are working on? Well, let's see. I don't do a lot of social media. Okay. But they're they're being posted. There, the stuff is, it's being printed and it's being in publications and news and and other people are posting things. So Sounds it's good. It's there. <laughs> All right. All right. So the show is Jean Claude Van Johnson. Uh, thank you again, to Felicia Rashad. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the About to Interview podcast, which is an About to Interview production. Make sure to click the subscribe button below, give a thumbs up, and check out the full show notes with links to the guests below, as well as on the website abouttoreview.com. Thank you to my amazing guests, and also thank you to Vexing Media, who provides audio and video editing services for this podcast. They are a graphic design, website design, and digital media company. You can find all of their work at vexingmedia.com, as well as on Facebook and Twitter at Vexing Media. Make sure to follow the podcast on all forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at About to Review, and subscribe to the podcast About to Review, which comes out every Wednesday. <laughs>